All right, welcome everybody to the Renegade HPD podcast. Uh, very fun episode today. I'm joined by the creative team behind Hired Steel, which is a fan animation set in the Battletech MechWarrior universe that has just dropped if you're watching this as it releases, but uh, their recent animation, which is episode one, um, which has been preceded by the pilot for this series, uh, just dropped. And so definitely check that out if you haven't already. We're gonna be showing it a little bit here later in the episode as we kind of go through a scene by scene uh, basis and let these guys kind of talk about the uh, creative process there. Before we get going, I'm going to go ahead and let everybody introduce themselves. Uh, there are five of us here total, so we're going to go ahead and just do a kind of a speaker view here, but uh, so that you have a name behind the face, let's go ahead and start, and uh, we can do this alphabetically. So, uh, Andreas, you are first. Uh, which one are you? Hi, um, this is Andreas. And then we have Bernard. Hi, that's me, Bernard. Hey, Konstantin. And uh, Sasha or Charlie? Yeah, here's Charlie. Charlie, perfect. All right. Um, welcome, everybody. And so, uh, you know, we can talk a little bit. Let's, uh, what are you guys' uh, individual kind of roles in this process? And then we talk a little bit about kind of the inspiration and what kind of motivated this, uh, this idea in the first place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, we have been working together in the DMC since 2000, I don't know, 12 or 13 now. So quite a long while, uh, at least Andreas um, and uh, Charlie and I. And um, yeah, I mean, we both, we all took, took up very, uh, a lot of roles, honestly, in this process. Uh, there's just so much work to be done that you can't really say, oh, one person did this. I mean, in general, um, I guess I took up kind of the generalist or director's role, or if you want to call it a producer, I don't know. Um, basically, I did all the stuff that uh, <laughs> fell under the table. Um, and Charlie did lots of the uh, background story and law research. He's, he's the most uh, knowledgeable with all the battle tech ins and outs um, that I don't know or the other guys don't know. Um, yeah, Bernard uh, joined us last June for the pilot. Um, he, uh, maybe you know him from his uh, other projects. We can talk about that later. Um, and then Andreas as well, uh, they both did lots of the animation and rigging work on the, on the characters and Max. Excellent. So what, uh, what kind of came first in the production process? Was it, was it kind of Charlie, you know, going through with the, the story and setting the, the foundation or were you just kind of, you know, thinking about some cool shots and then filling in the story behind it? Well, actually, first came up a uh, constant idea about let's do a teaser-like um, project inspired by the Astartes project from mm -hmm. Warhammer 40k. Um, during this process, we kind of thought, hey, let's, let's kind of start a new Machinima project like we did back in the days with uh, No Guts, No Galaxy. We had this little, I call it prototype called Davian Blues. Okay. But it didn't continue, so production was halted back in the days. But anyways, uh, we tried to fill up the story. I wrote up the scripts for the first part and continues it by at least many, many, many more ed episodes, which we need to tear it down. But yeah, I was just looking at many reference images and videos from my library, mostly Japanese anime, classical uh, mecha animation like Macross, uh, Voltum, Gundam, and so on and try to fill the shots with my ideas. Yeah. And so did Went you guys- Went to Constantine and uh, try to visualize it in a storyboard. Definitely. And so with, uh, do you guys have a storyboard now for the whole series or are you kind of just doing kind of a episode by episode storyboard? So uh, normally, um, at least what we've done with the pilot and, and the uh, first episode now is that um, we start with a written, uh, yeah, scribble where we all have a, like an open document where we can add our ideas and that gets turned into a more solid uh, script um, and then in, into, into a storyboard and honestly when we started episode one we didn't even know how much we could do so um, for now we have a like a rough rough timeline for the whole thing but we we honestly don't even know how how far we can take it since um there have been so many learnings now between all of the uh, different projects and now with episode two we have so much stuff 
like we build a whole asset library that we can just now build on it shaves off i guess one or two months at least from the whole production for the next episode so um yeah we have we have a, a timeline for the whole for the whole thing but it's definitely most detailed for the current productions that we're doing Awesome. And then this last one took six months. How long was it kind of, you know, getting that pilot out and starting like what happened before that one was published? Yeah, I mean, uh, like, like Andreas mentioned before we before we started recording, this has been born out of uh, Corona and the COVID lockdowns, which are pretty tough in Germany, at least, um, I guess, in Austria as well, where Bernard lives. Um, so uh, last April, we were all pretty much stuck in a hard lockdown and couldn't do nothing. And um, for most of us, uh, it, it was joined by reduced work hours. So we sat down and said, yeah, let's, let's, let's do something. So the pilot took, I guess, in total about four months. That was from uh, beginning of April until August or September. And then we slowly started in August um, parallel to the finalization of the pilot with episode one and episode one has been going for the whole time. So right. six months. Yeah. Uh, what led you to decide on the style that you took, you know, what kind of, uh, you know, was, I know there's a lot of mech warrior assets in there, you know, and Bernard, I caught your video, you know, for the, uh, for the remakes for the old mech warrior um, mercenaries, which was awesome. I'll definitely link that so people can check it out. But, uh, but yeah, so what kind of, you know, led you to that? Are you guys more mech warrior online players or you come more from the battle tech side of things? So what brought us together back then was definitely mech warrior online. So um, the OG TMC was born out of uh, a competitive unit. Actually, we were all part of the Tama Jaegers. I don't know if they are still active, but they were back in the day. And uh, we actually found ourselves because we wanted to make a promotional video for our uh, unit. So if you go onto our channel and select the oldest video, it's like from 2013 was the first video that we made together. Um, so we definitely come from Victoria Online. Um, and to be quite honest, um, it was beyond our capabilities when we made the pilot to just model Max from the ground up. So we were very thankful that uh, PGI enables uh, people to use their assets in such a way. Excellent. And Bernard, how do you how do you find this? Because uh, you know, I actually found you before I found out the connection between you and, and uh, TMC here. What uh, what kind of got you involved in kind of remaking yours? Uh, you refer to remaking the the intro or getting yeah, into the TMC? Intro. Yeah, the intro. Yeah, the intro. Um. Well, I was doing art for quite a while, but uh, due to marriage and kids, uh, I took quite a long break and picked up 3D art. I think it was in 2018 again. After Mardi Wars, so I had plenty of times uh, of time again on my hands. So uh, I decided so pick up 3D again. And I wanted to do something uh, Mac Warrior related because that's uh, something that stuck with me since my youth. And uh, yeah, that took me about a year to, to do that on my own, learned a lot in that process. Um, and uh, that's what caught the attention of the TMC crew, actually. And uh, Constantine contacted me uh, last year, uh, asking if I would be interested to, uh, to have a talk with them and, and be part of a team for a project. And so that's uh, how I ended up joining the team um, late in the final production of that or the, the pilot uh, doing just one one shot in the pilot the Shadowhawk uh, cockpit scene okay and then starting right in, in the production of episode one excellent and now let's talk, talk a little tell me a little bit about TMC you know because uh, we've been talking about hired steel but you haven't uh, you know maybe we just drop mentions of that so people understand kind of what the, where it's coming from where everything here is coming from so, um, yeah, just quickly, um, TMC uh, originally stood for uh, Tamar Media Company, since, like I said, we were part of a competitive Magoria Online unit. Mm -hmm. um, I guess we had like 80 members back then. And um, like I said, the, the, the people in the unit came together to make a video for the unit for recruitment in the Magoria Online forum. So whatever people use back then. 
And um, that video was uh, so successful that people from other units contacted us, hey, can you make a video for us as well? So we ended up making videos for Clan Ghost Beer International, the Mac Rangers, 36 D Wrong, um, uh, hmm? Phoenix Legion. Phoenix Legion, exactly. Yeah, that was the first one where we uh, uh, did like proper 3D stuff. Um, so it 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 grew from like a, like a unit service unit into um, into more like a standalone uh, little group. Um, we never did anything commercial or something. It was always just fan video focused, and then. Yeah, a few years back, uh, the Mac Warrior online thing just windled out for us and uh, we started um, moving to other games. And then um, I approached the guys uh, early in 2020 when uh, I was hit by the lockdown as well and said, like, yeah, do you want to sit down and make a make a full full CG 3D movie with me? <laughs> and they were, they were on board again. And so we just ramped up the TMC again. Awesome. Awesome. And Andreas, what's, uh, you know, in terms of your setup, I know um, Constantine had sent me some kind of notes on how everybody contributed and yours, you know, yours had rigging in there. So not being an animation guy, I'm not familiar with the term, you know, so what is, what is that exactly in that creation process? The rigging or the animation? The rigging. The rigging. Um, yeah, um, in the first um, we exported the um, asset from Mac Warrior Online, um, the Mac. And um, yes, we um, have to build our own rig um, for every Mac with like bones. Um, and you need a bone um, on every part of the Mac to move them. Um, they have a rig um, coming from uh, PGI, um, but it wasn't um, that uh, not bad, not good or bad. Um, it's not that what we required for our um, work. So my work was um, to set up a rig, um, which you can easily pose, um, so um, you can easily move the uh, Mac in the desired position. And um, then I started to uh, make some uh, walk cycles, with just the regular um, simple walk. I, I don't know if you see the videos um, Constantine made, um, where he shows our process um, for the involvement of um, the um, walk cycle so that it looks realistic. That's um, in the first was my work um, and the most important part of rigging, yes. Yeah. And it's it's funny, you know, in all my conversations with uh, with Bruins, we've talked a little bit about kind of movements and uh, and also through the through the conversation, the roundtable conversations that I've had, we talked a little bit about kind of how mechs move, and it's such a controversial topic within the battle <laughs> community in terms of like how dynamic should they be, how tank like, you know, how clunky, um, you know, and so kind of what what kind of inspired you guys, you know, in terms of thinking kind of how they should move because, you know, um, you know, having gotten a chance to kind of watch it and kind of seen, you know, I like to see the difference, you know, between the mobility and say, you know, a locust versus a rifleman. But, uh, you know, kind of what were you guys kind of constrained within the, the MechWarrior Online models that you had to work with and kind of what's kind of inspired, you know, because everyone has their opinion on that. Mm. I mean, uh, what definitely is a big difference is the difference between 2D and 3D art because we are constrained by the shapes and joints and architecture of the models. And even if we made our own models, uh, which we are now, by the way, for, for uh, the coming episodes, we have uh, own, own make models that are made by the community and contributed. Um, but even, even then, if you can decide the join shape and stuff, you are still very constrained. So you can't stretch a leg out like you could in 2D animation. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I can tell you that we had the discussion about um, how mechs move as well, quite long, actually, very mm -hmm. long. Uh, the walk cycle and rigging process was very extensive. Uh, I guess it took at least a month until we had the first walk cycle down and then we just kind of applied the same principle to the other mechs. So there was a lot of back and forth between Andreas and, and, and me. Um, but in the end, we decided to make them quite dynamic. So um, you would be shaken around quite a bit uh, in the mechs, but we just thought that uh, for, a, for a film, so not a game, for a film, um, when you have mechs that are completely stabilized, 
it just looks weird. It might be super effective and it might be um, necessary for a game where you're actually in the seat and it might be also super realistic because modern tanks, they, they don't move their guns as well. It's completely stabilized, but it just looks weird if you have a mech that's running and it's like completely still. Um, so in the end, we decided for a quite dynamic approach. So I guess uh, if you take a look at the low cost scene in, in episode one, um, you can see that it's uh, as dynamic as we can make it uh, with a 3D animation, at least with our limited resources. Right. And let's, uh, if you guys are ready, let's go ahead and we'll pull it up and we can kind of dive in and watch, um, you know, and you guys, we can talk a little bit about each scene. Now, yeah. would you guys, do you guys want to dive into the pilot first or do you want to just kind of do the, the second episode? You want to do both? I mean, we, we can do the pilot because there's actually a lot of difference between the, um, the pilot and the first episode. Um, okay. I will pull up the pilot on YouTube. Uh, give me one second. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. All right, let's okay. So this is this is the pilot episode. This is the uh, one we made uh, last year um, until summer. And uh, yeah, I can just play it and we can go through. Yeah, and feel free, you know, stop as we go. I'm assuming that people can kind of cut out and play this on their own separately, but. Uh... Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the intro, obviously, uh, just a quick note. Uh, I think everybody should have sort of noticed by now. Uh, we are tempted to make uh, like a little homage to the famous uh, MW3 intro or a cinematic where they come through the fog. And um, yeah, so this is a, like a full scale smoke simulation. It took like uh, quite a while to render. Um, so yeah. yeah I remember when I was talking to Bruins, he was talking about just how challenging the smoke was because he had this scene where the dragon kind of yeah. steps out of the smoke and it's not yeah. a not an easy render. So I think this was like 700 frames or something. Uh, the simulation time alone sh must have been more than two days. Wow. Yeah. So we uh, kind of yeah, copied it. Um, I even asked the new CEO of Macropose if it was okay. And he said, like, yeah, sure, go ahead. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> is, uh, is that George Lido, you know, that you guys have voiceover on that? Yeah, sure. We uh, have been working together with George since pretty much day one. So it must have been like seven years now. So uh, he knows us and uh, he, does us, he does us these little favors once in a while when we ask, uh, <laughs> ask him for a, for a fan work. Yeah. So yeah, this is the opening shot. Uh, this is the Leopard dropship approaching planet Iron Land. This is, um, this is the bridge. I guess I have to say a few words about this as well. Um, we always uh, wanted to show the Leopard uh, inside. Um, so this, this took uh, quite a while for me. Um, this is completely built from the ground up, textured, um, lit, rendered. Um, the only stuff that we used is the outside geometry from PGI, but we completely retextured that as well. Awesome. Yeah, that initial shot uh, looks great of it approaching the planet. Yeah. We have, um, we have this asset saved for later um, because there will be some more action on this bridge. Um, but for the pilot, obviously, we have to show it quickly. And then we go into the hangar for the first time. Um, this, is, this is kind of where we built up uh, a little cinematic version of the, of the Leopard hangar. It was very quick. Um, we were inspired a lot by the first teaser for Star Wars Episode 7, uh, where you can see the uh, stormtroopers in, uh, yeah. in this little dropship. So that was kind of the inspiration behind it. Um, Andreas did the scene first of uh, all in Unreal Engine five, uh, 4, uh, so the MacWarrior 5 uh, mod editor, and then we decided to uh, move it completely into, into Blender. Gotcha. Yeah, the, the rest of this uh, pilot is, is rendered in Maya, by the way. Um, that's what I use for my daily work. Uh, so we, back then I still used Maya, which, which uh, sadly was, was the cause that I had to render it all by myself because nobody else <laughs> owned a licensed <laughs> copy of Maya. Oh boy. <laughs> Uh, and we have another shot of the planet and then um, the entry burn of the of the dropship. Yeah, and this is this is the money shot where Bernard came in. Um, he 
completely did this from the ground up, obviously uh, working off uh, PGI's geometry. I mean, Bernard, do you want to say a few words about this, this shot? Mm, I can. Um, yeah, some of the geometry is uh, from the uh, original PGI cockpit, but I stripped quite a lot of things, uh, especially the geometry here in the middle where the radar now is uh, located. Uh, modeled buttons, uh, uh, did the screens, uh, put the lighting, and uh, also adapted a bit the animation uh, of, the, of the pilot, which uh, already came with the model, but uh, I wanted to give it a little bit of an individual touch. And yeah, so that's basically it. It's just a few seconds, and I, I wish I could have shown a little bit more <laughs> of the cockpit because quite a lot of work went in, uh, into it uh, but yeah I think it turned out nice and uh, the background there is also uh, assets uh, from Mech Warrior 5 and some hand model assets I smashed together uh, rendered out separately with smoke and that it, that's it basically so, yeah it looks great and now for the first episode, obviously we had to make the complete backside of the Shadowhawk. So um, mm. that is uh, that is a combination of uh, self self modeled and a little bit of PGI geo as well. But yeah, obviously, and that's something I wanted to say about all of this. Um, we have these assets now ready, so we can use the cockpit, and we don't have to completely remake it from the ground up. So for the next episodes, we have a perfect Shadowhawk cockpit ready. Excellent. Yeah, and you were mentioning a start is that it's, uh, it's, you know, do you think that's why, you know, each episode got longer and longer as it went is just, you know, once those kind of things were rendered that it was kind yeah, of Yeah, definitely. And, 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 yeah. and also, I mean, I don't know, uh, I mean, the creator of a start is, I think, uh, Sima Patterson is his name, but I'm not sure. Sorry if I butchered your name. <laughs> Sianna, um, I think, yeah. Yeah, he's obviously a pretty experienced artist, but you learn so much uh, going through these, these productions. Um, because I mean, I, I, I'm the only like professional 3D artist in this group. The other guys uh, all have uh, normal jobs. <laughs> um, so uh, production of, of such a fan, fan project is very different from what you do in an agency or big post house uh, daily. So I'm, I'm assuming that he obviously, I'm pretty sure that he definitely uh, learned a lot about the whole pipeline and the process. So it enabled him to make the episodes longer and longer. And then obviously, you have people coming in and helping. So the pilot we pretty much did on our own. And for episode one, we had amazing help with the music and the vehicles and the modeling already. And um, I'm hoping that that continues for episode two. Yeah. And uh, as these kind of build forward, you know, just a quick shout, where can people kind of throw support behind you guys if there's either a talent or you know, funding? I mean, you can always uh, approach us um, wherever you want. I mean, we are all over Twitter and Facebook and YouTube. So if you want to help us out, just, just shoot us a message. And then obviously we have the uh, TMC Patreon. That's not limited to Hired Steel. That's for the whole TMC. Um, but that obviously helps as well because um, the energy cost of rendering this project alone mm -hmm. was like uh, th three digits or four digits. Um, so uh, yeah. that definitely helps. Yeah. Awesome. And I'll put that link down below for people if they want to kind of throw some support behind you guys. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, we are always looking for for help in 3D. I mean, if you know Blender, uh, that obviously helps. But uh, we appreciate everything. Awesome. So yeah, this this um, like I said, this this was one of the shots that came out of Maya. This is one of the terrain shots where you have the uh, leopard uh, like flying low. And um, yeah, then we have the first vehicle shot. This is our own vehicle. This was modeled by a colleague of us, uh, Karl Streiger is his name. He's also all over Facebook and Twitter with his stuff. Um, awesome. I, th I think he makes these minis for custom 3D prints. So you can have them for your battle tech sessions, like the tabletop sessions. Mm -hmm. And he made this uh, little scout APC uh, for us as well. And this is obviously very important in the first episode as well. Very cool. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, um, you obviously all know the pilot. Uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, um, this is stuff done by Andreas again as well. Very awesome shots. And then we have the drop scene. Um, the landing here, it's like uh, 3D simulations in Houdini. I, I, I do these in Houdini with the smoke and the particle stuff. Uh, we can go into detail uh, on that later, maybe for, for a quick, quick look. Um, 
I love the detail just of the dirt getting kicked up by the, the max walk in you know, yeah. as it goes through. Yeah, that, that has been quite a lot of work. Uh, you would be surprised how hard it is to get a, a animated Alembic cache to render with cycles properly. <laughs> it has yeah. caused quite some headaches in our rendering pipeline, but uh, in the end we, we solved it. Yeah. So it's, that's uh, our mercenaries uh, starting into motion and that's where um, episode one picks off, um, I, I think we said a few hours later. So after the pilot in the timeline. Yeah. One of my um, personal favorite scenes, um, if you can rewind it late, a little bit back, mm -hmm. um, just of course, um, I don't know how many times I redo this scene, not the landing, the um, first when they walk. Um, I did a version um, with all four Macs walking, um, show it um, to the rest of the TMC. Um, they say, okay, uh, <laughs> please do it again. Um, I think I redone this um, 10, 15 times. And um, the hard time, uh, the hard drop is um, to get the uh, food to the ground. Um, not to go in detail, um, but it's a um, lot of work to get it. Um, the food's not um, striding um, again um, the um, environment. So um, I learned to hate this shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically yeah, hand it's... animating and placing the feet so they don't yeah. seem be, uh, to be sliding on the ground, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, which, which then is another problem for simulation because if you have uh, feet not, co not properly contacting the geometry, the uh, simulation algorithm I'm using is not properly triggering. So then I have to correct these uh, footsteps and uh, it's, it's, it's more work than you would think. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so that's that's our pilot, and then um, give me one second. I can pull up the version thirty-two of the of the uh, episode one. So there it is, and that's um, yeah. The story is is picking up a few hours after uh, the the pilot happens. Okay. So we start with this big panning shot. I mean, Planet Iron Land. If you check the lore, it's it's a it's a very interesting planet. It's a combination of deserts and uh, very dense pine forests. And uh, we attempted to recreate this with this valley and, and the other scenes. Yeah, this is, uh, this is, well, the terrain looks great, but I love the framing in, the, in this opening shot for this. Yeah. But uh, we'll let the people see it. I mean, we, we um, for basically all of the shots, uh, all, all kinds of, of people in the TMC posted inspiration from, from other movies and, mm -hmm. and, and um, there's the saying that everything is a remix. So uh, I guess uh, episode one is a big remix of, of stuff that has been there and our own imagination. Um, but yeah, this opening shot has turned out really, really cool. Yeah, it's true. Well, you mentioned Star Wars before. And uh, I mean, George Lucas did all those space battles based on what World War yeah. One, you know, I think footage, yeah. video footage, World War Two video footage. So yeah. Yeah. So this 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 drone will will reappear later in in hard steel as well. It's one of our own assets too. I think uh, I did this model pretty much completely this time. That was mm -hmm. my 3D modeling job. I I do this rarely, but but uh, when I do it, uh, it's uh, really really fun. Yeah. So uh, this opening shot, and then we go into the close up. Um, this this as well. Uh, Again, without going into too much technical detail, but we do these scenes in real scale. So um, in order for us to have the, the scaling between the mix and the environment and the people right, we have to do it on real scale. So obviously this drone was a few kilometers out and um, the internal kernel of Blender is still 32 bit, I think. So what we actually started uh, getting into is um, trace precision errors. <laughs> Um, for all of you familiar with it, uh, when you have a 32-bit um, room for your numbers, it starts to get uh, precision problems after after a distance. So with that shot, we had weird geometry flickering. We had the glass not working. The camera was shaking. So in the end, um, we pinned the drone statically and made mm. the environment move like awesome. in the old silence movies. Yeah, yeah. Now it's perfect solution. Yeah. But that's the kind of stuff that you run into. Yeah. 
and this is this is my personal nemesis <laughs> i think i think i'm i'm not over exaggerating when i'm saying that this probably took me two months um and held up the process quite a bit uh, the other guys were moving along very quickly in the process especially when when the two of them were animating at the same time uh, and i was stuck with this shot uh, because this is all completely self-modeled again um and i severely underestimated uh the task <laughs> of, of building up this uh, abandoned base um it's way too detailed for the drone shot detail of course uh, so we uh we will get down to the ground eventually um but yeah, that's that's our uh, forward operating pirate base that they set up in this old SLDF weapons depot. That's great, and I love uh, I love kind of seeing the the people walking around in their shadows yeah. in the light. That's you know great detail. Yeah, I mean if you uh, we can go a little bit of, of of treasure hunting. I mean there's actually a little Starleague defense force I can hear up there. Mm. It's very rusted, so you can can barely see it. There's people walking over these these walls oh, wow. <laughs> there's one guy down here <laughs> and then uh yeah uh, like i said it's probably a little bit too detailed but but again now we have this asset and now uh, we can speed up the pipeline a little bit more perfect yeah and again these these vehicles are all custom made except for the thunderbolt um, but the thunderbolt uh bernard uh, touched up quite as Quite a lot as well, but you will see that in, in the coming coming episodes. Yeah. So Charlie, were you the one that decided what mechs get used as the story man? Yeah, mostly. Awesome. When right. I saw the when I took up the idea um, for this episode and wrote uh, what is happening, I also was imagining which vehicle would fit, fit best for the scenes, mm -hmm. and immediately. I remembered those awesome models uh, by Karl Streiger, what he did in the past, and thought, okay, we need him in, in the team and we need his vehicles just to pull up the shot. Yeah, because there's, there's not much um, Mac Warrior themed vehicles um, that you can pull up and also we don't want to uh, like mishmash arc starts too much. So obviously there's, there's always the possibility to just buy assets from, from stores. Yeah. There's millions of, of uh, assets online, but um, by getting them custom made, they all have the same art style and I think they fit very well together. Yeah. And then for the drone shot, we, uh, I think the inspiration was, was a recording from the US police where they chase some guy down the highway with like a helicopter and the thermal camera and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we kind of uh, based our um, head up display on that. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, we have the first character. <laughs> so uh, early in the process, we had the discussion if we actually want to uh, bite the bullet and, and show 3d characters. And I, uh, Remember that I was against it. <laughs> um, what I can say, um, Constantine throwing a centrum, um, when Bernard and I um, say we have to use uh, 3D characters. Um, he was, um, he has the opinion um, that uh, would be a problem. Um, how do you call it? Um, the ugly lane or Oh, the, the uncanny, uncanny valley. Uncanny valley, yeah, yeah. Uncanny valley, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we uh, put a lot of effort um, to the characters. Um, yeah. They're uh, based on um, that's 3D, uh, 3D characters, um, and exported to Blender, um, and um, edited it um, there. Um, get a new shader um, done by Bernard or Constantine, I don't remember. Combination. Yes. But I, um, in the end, I think it's um, kind of really good. Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, I mean, like I said, uh, I'm 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 the guy uh, that that does this as his day job as well. And I remember that uh, my my old supervisor at my old agency was always like, "Yeah, we we don't do humans <laughs> mm. <laughs> because that never works." And I mean, um, obviously, these guys are not uh, perfectly photorealistic as well as you would expect it from like a Marvel movie or stuff. But we actually have to hand animate them, so there's no facial capture or something. 
Well, um, I mean, even the big studios aren't out of the Uncanny Valley yet, you know, yeah. between uh, between Luke yeah. and Leia and Star Wars yeah. and uh, what a Grand Moff Tarkin, but uh, yeah. No. So, I mean, in the end, the guys pulled it, pulled it off very nicely, especially considering that um, this is hand animated and everybody who ever did something like this knows how crazy hard it is to get human motion in, in mm -hmm. hand animation right, and it's a perfect job. Yeah, it's a, a completely different thing than animating mechs, which nobody has seen in real life and nobody recognizes how they would move. But a uh, human, I mean, everybody knows subconsciously how they move and they detect the slightest uh, thing which is off. And so that was uh, quite a challenge, but I think we, we did a, quite a good job. So are you guys sitting at home with cameras on yourself, kind of, you know, acting out your scenes and then trying to yeah. replicate it? Awesome. Yeah, that's actually what I did, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's how you have to do it. Uh, we have, uh, I, have, I think it's over 200 muscles in our face alone. And obviously we, we don't have that in our 3D characters. So that's always just an approximation. Yeah. But like I said, for the, for the time we had, and I, I, want to stress that again since we haven't mentioned it um this is our hobby so we do this after after hours after work um most of the guys in here have 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 uh kids i have a girlfriend to take care of so uh it's it's um it's crazy how how we even managed to pull this off but um that's that's why it took six months yeah okay yeah, so continuing, I mean, he, he, he gets all the, all the data in his, in his command central. He is the guy inside the muskrat. So uh, the muskrat is the, is the drone control vehicle. And, um, and uh, yeah, he so identifies. So the drone is piloted, you're saying? Yeah, or the you, or drone is piloted. It's not a remote yeah. drone? Okay, interesting. He, uh, I mean, we try to stress that by this, um, this control screen up here and um, the, uh, the, uh, joystick that he's handling but like I said this is this episode I guess works most of like an establishing episode for for the rest of the story because all the elements that we see in this episode will reappear later so the drone the bridge the max the pirates um, yeah so then a question can you call it a drone if it's piloted uh, no no it's not it's um, you misunderstand it it's not okay. a pilot it is remote piloted Pilot. Got it. All right. So uh, is, he, is he in the, the leopard or is he uh, on the ground or something? On the He's, ACC, on the muskrat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Got it. Right. That's that's why the muskrat has this has this big uh, satellite dish. And I mean, Perfect. we try to try to tell that story by the next shot. Okay. So this this cut here. So we cut yeah. just outside. He he's sitting in here, and um, controlling the drone from the ground up. Perfect. Yeah. So then we have the first shot of our max and. Um, you can see the next thing we actually worked with uh, animated trees for the foreground mm -hmm. the, the trees were, were quite an adventure as well until we got those right uh, because those are hand generated as well and uh, in in these programs you have to uh, yeah let's let's call it you have to grow them right? and you have to prune them and you have to uh, add little growing growing variables and until it was looking like this um, we had a lot of funny shaped trees so what you're saying is your next video is going to be set on like a spaceport <laughs> where everything yes. is solid and doesn't move. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, honestly, uh, if you watch the Astartes um, movies, he actually was a lot cleverer than us because his episodes always happen in darkness. Mm. Because if you if you see his 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 earlier making offs, he he's able to hide so much in the darkness and in, and in the shadow, it's not saying that he's uh, cheating out or anything, not by any means, but it's yeah. just, it's just cutting down on the work that you have to do as an individual. And um, I think we all underestimate <laughs> that a little bit, but in the end, uh, we managed to somehow uh, render this giant environment with 7 billion trees and stuff. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, and just, so, I, I yeah. love the, the light, you know, reflecting and yeah, it looks great. So in a way, environment is almost like uh, animating humans because it's also, especially with his, all this vegetation, it's really hard to get right. And would have been easier to do uh, an Arctic scene or a desert for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, or like a, like a no man's sky alien landscape because you, you don't have a visual reference how, how a mm -hmm. fern or how a pine tree looks like. 
um, on an alien planet, but we do. Um, so we we kind of took the hard route, <laughs> but I guess it paid off in the end. That looks great. You guys did well. We have our Merc Lance uh, stomping on, and then we have our next character. This is this this guy is actually voiced by Tex from the Black Pants Legion. I I think you know him. <laughs> yep. Uh, he, he did a great job. Um, he recorded like two or three takes from from all his lines and did little variations and proofreads. But all our all our voice actors did. So uh, shout out to these guys. Um, I mean, we are not able to to offer any kind of payment because we are we are not making any profit ourselves. Uh, quite the contrary. <laughs> so um, it's definitely a very very uh, great help, and we are thankful for every voice actor that we have. Awesome. Yeah, so this is this is our lands commander guy. He's sitting in the shadow cockpit, and like I mentioned with the pilot, um, you have the backdrop here that's mm-hmm. completely self-modeled by Austin, uh, one of our freelance members, I guess we, you could call him. He's known as M42A, I think, in in the Mac Warrior community, and you know him from the Atlas Two or the uh, Quick Draw Max that he posts, the line art stuff. So then I took this and textured it and uh, we built a cockpit out of this. And uh, yeah, the, the seat as well uh, is all, also custom custom asset and the helmet and um, all the other stuff in here. Yeah. Awesome. You guys tried reaching out to uh, Alan So at all? I think it's, is that the right name? He did a Timberwolf cockpit. Oh, yeah. um, we, I think um, Bernard back then made a big uh, reference collection of cockpit shots from Victoria games. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it was a part of that as well. Um, I only then made the connection afterwards uh, because I think you published one of his artworks, the Timberwolf. And then I, I looked did, at yeah. it and was pretty blown away because the cockpit he, he made is obviously like super crazy. Yeah. He does that professionally though. He's not amateur. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we, we reach out uh, to everyone we can. I mean, um, the problem we, we had in the end is we had more help than we could use because uh, the problem is always the, the weakest link in the chain and the weakest link in the chain was, was, was me setting up all scenes to render and mm-hmm. um, getting it out all because episode one has uh, 36 shots. So, so 36 uh, full CG shots um, with all custom setups and settings and keeping click of all that was, was, a, was a really hard task. Yeah, I got to say this locust look, that outside shot looks amazing. That's definitely my favorite unit that we've seen so far. Thank you. I mean, the, the locust, um, you've got a little custom treatment as well. We try to make it look more piratey. Uh, Bernard did all of the modeling. Um, for the custom weapons, um, for the uh, machine guns and stuff, and then the texture does a lot as well. Um, yeah, it looks we, great. I love the black and white too. Yeah, I mean we are kind of constrained by the low poly assets from from PGI um, because obviously the geometry is from them. Um, they have the high poly stuff on their servers, and my dream would be to get <laughs> high poly meshes from them, but I guess they can't do that. Yeah. Um, so uh, I have to work with a, with a very low resolution normal map. So uh, the max that we render are all 8K and the normal map that we get from PGI with, which, which has all this, this, um, this custom detail um, is, is 1K. And I have to AI upscale that and do all kinds of tricks um, to, to get it looking a little bit more modern. Because obviously, I mean, the, these maps were made uh, in 2012 when they made MWO, so. Right. Yeah. So then, then we go into the cockpit of the Locust and this guy is kind of chilling out uh, when he's disturbed by our mercenary lands. Um, he has his, his passive radar on um, to not get spotted immediately. And then before he gets a chance to uh, voice to his um, to his HQ, um, the, as soon as he turns on his mech, the mercenaries obviously get a blip on their radar and then uh, they immediately try to take him out. And we have the, the brawler hunchback uh, taking a shot. 
this this guy has has gotten the reactive armor treatment. Um, we try to make the hunchback even even more brawly by by giving him like claws and anti personal mines and uh, like a chef dispenser and um, explosive reactive armor plates and stuff. So this is our uh, close quarter specialist. Yeah. And then he immediately takes a shot uh, when he sees the hunchback start up. He misses, but he hits the antenna. So uh, that's uh, a she, right? That's your female pilot. Exactly. Yeah, we we uh, try to get a little bit more diversity into the to the pilots because um, obviously, especially in the in the in the books, uh, the universe is quite diverse as well, and we wanted to hop in on that. And um, I thought it was was kind of cool uh, getting that in. And who voiced that? That's um, Aggie Law Girl is, is her name. She's a streamer. Okay. Um, but uh, if you watch the episode, we have all the names listed up in the credits, so you can check them out. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and then he obviously tries to, to voice back. Doesn't work. Little clunky thing. And then they are trying to take him out. Oh, this is my favorite shot here. Just that those tracers following it. Yeah. yeah that looks so I mean, good. we there's this there's this disparity between Battletech and the MacWarrior games because um in in like the real Battletech or the, the Battletech um video game, most of your shots don't hit, uh especially over distance. So we try to get it a little bit more realistic so that actually uh like one out of twenty shots is hitting. And, but that's already enough for the weak uh, knee joint of the locust because it's a direct hit. Right. So yeah. Mm. Let's watch this sequence again because so much so much work has gone into this. Um, we have the UAC spinning up on the on the rifleman, and then the, the, he he gets a splash hit from the laser and the traces. Uh, then one one hits. Cuts the leg off and then the locust is done. That, that shot was quite a lot of work as well because there's so much going on. And we had to get the, the glow on the armor uh, with uh, dynamic paint maps. Mm -hmm. So the, the laser was basically painting a black and white map on, on the texture to make it glow in, in that area. Then some particle effects uh, when the knee joint gets blown off and uh, and actually animating the falling or the fall of the locust was also quite hard. Yeah. Uh, the, the walk or run cycles uh, Andreas did on this guy, they were already great. And the animation effort was pretty low. But uh, once you have to create uh, animation, which is physical uh, and dynamic, that's uh, pretty hard stuff to get right. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, this, there's this thing that uh, you always um, notice with uh, CG, especially if it's not simulated, but animated. Uh, a lot of the time, what really breaks the immersion is, is the weight of uh, 3D objects. So uh, what's really hard when you are animating is to get the weight feel right, especially when it's um, a heavy object, because you always tend to underestimate the reaction that something makes when it falls down or reacts to something. Yeah. So this as well, like all the other stuff, went through probably, I don't know, 10, 20, 15 different versions uh, mm -hmm. until we were happy with it. We did uh, weekly meetings and then we did, then, then did bi-weekly meetings to discuss uh, the process that we have done in between. And then we have a project controlling software that we use, uh, but um, that was one of the shots that was iterated upon a lot, yeah. And then you have small parts of the Mac that are actually simulated. So like these uh, these little hinges here, they, they are actually simulations. So these are not hand animated. They react to the physical physical falling of the 3D object. I don't know if we can see that. Oh, yeah, I saw them bouncing, uh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, I, I trashed the simulation. I Finally, I hand animated that thing. <laughs> <All right. laughs> <Okay. laughs> Well, then I take that back. But I mean, we have the antennas for all the mix that the, yeah. these are simulated. Um, mm. They are wiggling around. Yeah. 
Then we have the launch of the jump jets. And then we go in for the for the surrendering call. And that's that's one thing we discussed internally as well, because um, the first plan was to have him just just shoot the pilot immediately. Um, but then we realized that might be more brutal than we want our characters to be. So if he gives him the chance, because the mech is obviously disabled and the pilot is, is, is pretty close to dying already, um, to, to shut off his mech, uh, get out and, and, and surrender. Um, but he doesn't. Well, I'm sure even the most brutal mercenary would love free salvage as opposed to slagging it. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. I mean, the locust would have been worth more uh, with not a giant hole in his, in his face. Yeah. And this, this shot, this shot is, is uh, so, so crazy as well. I mean, Bernard, uh, you did this, so if you can say a few details, especially about the face of the guy. Oh yeah, uh, I really uh, felt sorry to let this guy go because I did the character animation and mm. uh, so uh, also the previous shots when the guy is starting up the locust. Um, and uh, in this shot you see that he's uh, bleeding uh, out of his nose and I thought uh, if he's falling that hard probably the advisor would get into this phase and, and leave yeah. a cut here. So these, uh, this is uh, hand painted uh, afterwards to give the impression that he is uh, a little bit um, affected by the uh, by the fall. Yeah, and yeah, the, all, a lot of animation passes as well because you have to make uh, the lip sync uh, match the voiceover or the lip movement match the voiceover uh, we got. And I got quite late, so I I had an idea what he had to say and I prepared it kind of. But then had to de redo and really sync the lip movement to the voiceover we got. Yeah. So a so, lot of animation passes for these so two that, shots. That would have been a learning that that we have uh, now as well. Start way earlier with the uh, with the music and the and the voiceover because that uh, we kind of caught up a lot um, of work that we probably didn't have to do. But yeah, that's that's how you learn. Yeah, then, then he obviously, uh, I mean, here you can see uh, the locus is really patched together. So you have uh, cables attached with duct tape and stuff. It's, it's really not the, not the best shape mech. Um, and, I, and I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but in, in lore, most of these mechs are actually very old. Um, and yeah. uh, the, the, these guys are not taking, taking that much care about their equipment. And Charlie, when is this set? What year is this supposed to be in? Uh, it's supposed to be in the year 3041. Uh, okay. So you can say um, just some years after the first, success, first uh, succession war. And our pirates, a little detail on that one, they are remnants of the long fallen Rimworld Republic, Amaris Dragoons. Okay. So that explains the coloring of the max, also the pirate emblem, and also why their max are so tetras. They are taped together and very, really in a bad, bad shape. Yeah. And uh, I try to pick it up in the texturing as well. So the max from outside have rust where you have the paint scrape away and the bare metal is exposed. They, they start to rust a little bit and then we have all these broken steps and smaller pieces that are hanging off of the mix. Um, but yeah, uh, so Bernard put a, an amazing amount of effort into this cockpit. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think in the end, this was even more custom uh, made than the, than the Shadowhawk one. And I'm glad uh, that the duct tape is finally visible in this shot because uh, <laughs> I, it also cost me a bit to model it and to, to make it appear that it's really uh, stuck to the surface. Um, without even knowing if the, sh the final shots would show it and, and yeah. some other details like, like the duct tape here. Yeah. But yeah, uh, and probably people won't notice when they watch it the first time, but perhaps they watch it two or three times, they uh, get hold of all these little details we put in, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. And I mean, um, especially if they're watching this, uh, 
this podcast. <laughs> I would, I would, I would love to see it with a fresh eye because uh, the problem you always have when you work on on something for that long. I've I've seen this video in all of its versions probably <laughs> a thousand times now, yeah. and I don't notice anything anymore. Uh, you get so work blind, um, and uh, I just forget that this detail is even there. Yeah, I mean, uh, I get that to some degree, editing, running at HVG, and just that appreciation for editing and seeing things over and over again is not my strong suit. I was just watching the, the Snyder Cut of Justice League last week, four hours, and I couldn't imagine how much time, you know, these people have seen the same thing over and over yeah. again. So yeah, yeah. it's, uh, you know, I, uh, I appreciate what you're saying. To be able to watch it with fresh eyes is, is nice. Yeah. Well, you'll be able to get to see uh, DC Bruins uh, new anim new animatic with fresh eyes because that should be coming out in the next couple of days. Yeah, I saw that on Twitter. Uh, it's, that's, that's, that's something great as well because his animation style is, uh, and, and, and his whole video style is so completely different from ours. Mm -hmm. um, I think we can learn quite a bit from his way of making stuff appear in movement. Um, like I said, it's it's hard to translate that one-on-one -on -one into 3D, but he, that's definitely something that, that he really does exceedingly well. Uh, and I always love how fluid the light makes move in his, in his animations. Um, but a quick tip, if you are a creator and you get work blind of your work, um, make a render of it flipped. If you, if you flip it, uh, like um, mirror it, sorry, um, then the brain has to rewire and it appears more fresh to you. Mm, so okay. if that ever happens to you, that's a common trick. Um, some, some programs even have a, have a shortcut for that because that's so common in our industry. So yeah, there's this, yeah. He then decides to take on the uh, Shadow Hawk in front of him with his two remaining light machine guns, um, which obviously doesn't work. So you see all the little impacts here. And, and, and again, this is all dynamic pain. So these, these glow for, I don't know how many frames burn out, but they, they glow after they are hit. And then this mm. little decal appears. Yeah, I think uh, about 100 frames and also particle work on the cockpit. And yeah, that was quite a lot of work. And I was even counting how many shots he probably could put out in these 100 frames or four seconds. <laughs> <laughs> to make it uh, <laughs> kind of uh, be realistic and yeah, yeah the answer is uh, the little more than you that... had time to deal with. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I hope these little details are appreciated and probably they are not noted. Uh, I mean, if it, if it's not noted, uh, if it doesn't stick out, and probably it's uh, uh, we've done a good job uh, yeah. because yeah, they don't uh, or they look natural. Yeah and add to the picture yeah then then we obviously have the have the final final moments of the locust locust pilot's life this this scene i think was the most heavy 2d uh, compositing scene that i that i did um it was all of the stuff that begins here is like completely overlaid uh in in, in 2d and we even have uh casings eject from the uac5 <laughs> Um, but yeah, yeah, then Locus is burning out, the guys are moving on to the designated target. So in, in the distance there in the mountain, there's the base at the foot of the hill. And uh, maybe in the next episode, we see them arrive there. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe we have a full episode of them moving through the forest. <laughs> awesome. yeah that's us us four and then and then the awesome rest of the team i mean there's our, our amazing cast obviously and then uh, the uh, additional crew i want to give a quick shout out to to these guys especially uh, um patrick Kristen, austin and eldon um Patrick did the music for, for this episode. Um, some of you maybe know him under his uh, artist name, Prono Bozo. He does this kind of EDM dance music. You can find him on Spotify. Um, then uh, Christian or Karl Streiger and then Austin or uh, he is, uh, he wanted to be mentioned with his um, 
art station name. Sorry if I if I said that wrong. It's the Geiger A42, but you know him from his name M M42A. Uh, he, they they did the custom vehicle modeling for us, and then we have Eldon Eldon Cowgirl, Cow the guy that made the T-shirt that you are wearing right now. Right here. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, oh, Eldon. For the next round, you can't get this one. Actually, I think he does have some extras. So hop on real quick and uh, on Instagram, yeah. Aldonius yeah. Rex, probably the easiest way to connect with them. Yeah, I approached him. He made this awesome uh, 2D concept of RMX in in blazing amount of time, and then uh, Bernard uh, turned that into the 3D poster that's used as a thumbnail and was posted by me, I think, uh, a few days ago. Yeah, and then obviously we have uh, Nick, who is our Houdini tool dev. Uh, he's not directly in TMC, but he's a real life friend of mine. He's a he uh, programmed some Houdini algorithms for us that we use for the step next step calculation and uh, and the other stuff that's that's custom made. And then uh, Tim helped out with with rendering as well. And then we have all our patrons that uh, keep the TMC afloat. Uh, big thanks to those. And then we have the special thanks, obviously you. I mean. Uh, You've, you've pushed us quite a lot during this time and then all the other content creators and all the other guys from the uh, discords and stuff. And then of course our families who've been mighty patient <laughs> with us, uh, spending a lot of late nights on this and then our contacts. And that's the first episode of Hired Steel. Awesome, can't wait. <sighs> How many episodes are you projecting? <laughs> uh, I think I'm not allowed to say anything. All right, well, gag order on that one. <laughs> Very cool. Well, yeah. what's um, you know, what are you guys' favorite shots in there? You know, is there one that one or two that each of you are especially proud of? I know when you mm. paused it with that locust down in the dirt. Oh man, that looked good. Yeah, I mean I the like the. The face palm of the 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 whole locus sequence, I think, um, is is uh, one of my personal favorites. Uh, yeah, that shot of the locus just coming across with the tracers following yeah. them. Oh, that's such a great yeah. shot. Yeah. And then and then the, and yeah, and uh, Bernard's they, uh, you know highlight where the laser hit. That looks that's good detail. Then obviously the glowing stump and stuff. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. that's my favorite shot. What about you guys? Um. Technically, I'm most proud of the final shot of the Shadowhawk uh, pilot or Lance Commander. Um, yeah. I think the the animation, the character animation, turned out pretty good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's it's been amazing uh, doing animation work uh, for all shots. I don't know if I have a favorite. And uh, as Constantine said, I, I would like to see it with fresh eyes, forget everything. Yeah. <laughs> just for a day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and watch you need it, one of those uh, uh, men in black flash sticks, right? Yeah, yeah like exactly. <laughs> the problem would be that you would probably think, oh, no, let's do it all over again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and that, the, uh, the opening shot, too, with that drone is really good. I really like that shot. Yeah. And it's a Thanks. good dynamic intro to a scene. You know, yeah. I could, I can't pin it, but that's definitely, I can see the inspiration from something. Yes. Yeah, yeah, um, uh, um, this shot is inspired by uh, Dread, the movie Dread. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, um, what a the, great uh, movie that is. Of the scene um, is, a, is a drone um, flying um, to a city. Uh -huh. And we use this as an inspiration for. Um, this shot. Yeah, and then and then I mean obviously these uh, slow panning aerial shots. I mean uh, every second Adam Sandler movie starts with a panning shot of the Golden Gate Bridge. Mm. So uh, <laughs> that's that's obviously how how, how to start. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's I guess uh, turned out fine. But um, my favorite scene um, is um, the rifleman shooting because it's. Um, one of the most action scene in this um, video. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. This one. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't it's that really powerful design. Stuff, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, um, we drew a lot of inspiration from all the Warhammer uh, 
fan animations. Uh, I mean, obviously our starters, but there's other for Warhammer 40k stuff. Um, the Warhammer 40k community has the advantage of being about 50 times larger than the mm -hmm. Battletech community is. <laughs> so they are much more, uh, much more afloat with community 3D projects and, and other art. Uh, so there's a giant pool of great ideas that we can be inspired from. Yeah, well, I'm hoping with the gallery, we can identify some more and get them interested. I know with Bruins, it'd be the first one that's coming out in the next couple of days. And then yeah. uh, I think then I've, I've talked to uh, uh, Jared Owen, you know, for later this year, because he's super busy now about doing a piece. But I, the next one, I think I'll track down a concept artist and, and give them a short story and, and have them basically spit out like, I don't know, however many concept art sketch that we can afford with the gallery. And uh, yeah, so try to pull new people in. We'll, get, yeah. <laughs> we'll catch up to Warhammer one of these days. One day. Uh, what I want to say is, I mean, we are obviously very biased towards 3D art. So uh, if anybody is interested in, in, in doing 3D, uh, it has been becoming so accessible over the, over the past years. I mean, obviously, Bernard, uh, you've, you've been doing 3D art for quite a long while. I've, I think you even, even did stuff for, for MacWarrior 4, right? Mm. No, for Mac Warrior 4, I was uh, doing maps, but I mean, I started with 3D when I was uh, 16, and that was on MS DOS uh, <laughs> <laughs> and Pop Ray, if, if oh, anyone man. remembers that. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so, so uh, right now, I mean, I mean, uh, computers have become so powerful that you can render these kinds of full CG shots in your uh, living room. And um, there's free software. Obviously, we work with Blender mainly. We have some paid, uh, paid, paid programs in the pipeline. But you can pull off project like this um, with a zero software cost. So um, if you want to get into it, just go on YouTube, uh, search for for a tutorial for the for the stuff you want to do, and, and and get started. And if you uh, want to make uh, make art, you can always shoot us a message, and uh, we will help you out. Very cool. So have you guys already started on the next episode or are you guys taking a little breather before you dive in? So um, what's really important is, is um, after production like this, especially like as well, if, you, if you're working in a professional environment, all your systems and servers, they look like the bomb exploded. So we have, um, we have, a, we have a hosted cloud somewhere where we uh, work all in sync. And that started out with a, with a nice structure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, that sounds a lot like my hard drive in you know, these days. Yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, the, the, the problem is that this just blows up exponentially and we have 500 gigabytes of, of 3D data that we have to organize and clean up and uh, missing textures and broken references and uh, versions of stuff that's from December that we don't have to keep around anymore. So our current plan is to... Um, yeah, so currently we are planning the, the story. We are actually, uh, I think, pretty decided on what we want to do um, roughly. And then we will parallelly uh, start concepting and animating uh, the first stuff. And uh, while we are doing that, we are cleaning up our pipeline. So the next episode isn't so heavy on the pre-production side and we can focus more on, on uh, getting longer shots and longer animation and uh, more action and because uh, what you have to keep in mind for this episode, we had to create all of this stuff in addition to creating the episode itself. So all the assets, all the vehicles, all the scenery, the effects, um, porting it all over from Maya to Blender. But that's done now. So we can work with this stuff. Um, you, you hear that a lot if you follow game development that's in alpha or beta. The developers always talk about that. They have these broad blockers. And once they get over that, the, the pace will pick up. So that's what, what we are hoping to, to get from, from this uh, three to four weeks of, of cleaning up now. <laughs> Wonderful. And if people want to support you guys, is it TMC on Patreon? What's the Patreon tag? Uh, TMC was taken, so we are TMC DE. <laughs> TMC DE. All right. What's yeah. DE stand for? Uh, Deutschland. <laughs> okay. All right. Do it. <laughs> Excellent. So TMC DE, don't give those other TMC guys your money, you know, support <laughs> yeah. these guys and uh, help them pay for all those uh, the, the electricity bills from uh, rendering these fine animations. Yeah. Awesome. 
what uh, you know are there other pro- outside projects uh, you know the rest of the team is working on? You know, I know Bernard. Uh, what's your YouTube channel, Bernard? I can't remember off the top of my head. I'll definitely link it down below for people though. But if anyone's listening, you know, what's the name of that? Um, uh, just called Raul on YouTube. That's R A dash U L. Okay. Excellent. And is that? Did you do the Mech Warrior Two redo the the thirty first century combat or just the mercenaries one? Uh, just the mercenaries one right because there is a there's another one out there that too that looks good um but uh yeah all of the mercenaries final tagline look at this way kid you get to keep all the money yeah i i love that that intro more than the 31st centuries yeah i have very good uh, fond memories of of that time and and period of my life and also the the game itself and I remember how amazed I was when I watched the intro. Yeah. And that's probably the reason I picked this as a, a project to, to redo and mm-hmm. to tune my skills in 3D again. And looking back now at it, uh, I also progressed with this, uh, with this Hired Steel episode one that yeah. I would do so much uh, different nowadays, also having better hardware. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it basically brought me uh, brought me the attention of uh, these guys so um, i'm happy to be working now on, <laughs> on such good stuff yeah i mean we we kind of uh, over three corners i found your post on on the blender artist forum and then shot you a direct message there and then so sent you a discord invite so uh, it worked out in the end <laughs> i mean for for me obviously i'm i'm a little bit younger um, i grew up with Warrior 3 uh, and my my dad gave it to me back then um, the game and I remember watching the intro over and over and over every time I I started the game and I, f- I found it so so crazy well done how how they t- told the story of these giant machines they they looked so heavy and and crazy and you could actually pilot them then and then obviously Megoria Four came out and uh, yeah so uh, that's, yeah I think that's what I, I hope I'm remembering this the artist name right but I think it's Punakedu on DeviantArt that uh, that does he did a an illustration of like that opening shot with the with the summoner and the uh, Timberwolf looking down on the city beautiful beautiful shot I've tried yeah. I've tried to get it into uh, some custom cards but the shot is too wide to fit on the card so I'm like mm-hmm. uh, how can I do that <laughs> but uh, but yeah that's a great great scene and I was laughing because uh, uh, Bruins uh, did a little homage to it in his uh, in his free hat, where one of the infantry gets stepped on, like the the poor guy, yeah. in the Mac Warrior, that trip. The, the screaming guy, yeah. <laughs> He's got the Wilhelm scream going there. Yeah, yeah perfect. Yeah. What about you, Charlie? What are you working on next here? Ooh, I'm trying not to work on any other projects when TMC. Yeah. My real life job is pretty stressful and busy so <laughs> i'm glad if i can do team c stuff in my free time excellent very cool andreas what about you it's just, no, just um, <laughs> keep on with tmc stuff excellent. Um, not too much yeah. free time yeah i mean uh well, COVID's given us all too much free time. I mean, Renegade HPG is a COVID baby, you know, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I see it as a COVID baby as well. Yeah, and I mean, uh, Andreas, you're severely underestimating uh, what you're doing. You're building a house and a family at the same time. So uh, I guess uh, that has to be mentioned as well. <laughs> it takes some time. It's tough too, especially in the COVID. Mine's four years old. And uh, yeah, she's uh, basically half of my half of my week is is uh, parenting full, full time. And then the rest is doing what I can to pay bills. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, I appreciate yeah, yeah. you guys uh, taking the time and, and chatting about this. You know, I hope you guys get lots of attention. I'll kind of do what I can to kind of steer it your way and give people a little behind the scenes. And uh, and we'll, I'll, we'll put you on the tentative books for episode two when it comes out. So we'll do it again. We'll kind of do a yeah. little director's commentary. These are always fun. I love doing it and yeah. sharing, sharing with the community. But, uh, but yeah, so we got uh, TMC DE on Patreon and then on uh, Twitter. I think it's higher. You have a hired steel one. Specific? We, uh, we have a, we have a hard steel account. Yeah. We, okay. we snacked up that, that tech. <laughs> Perfect. At hired steel and, uh, and definitely on YouTube. It's uh, TMC on YouTube. And then uh, raw-ul, R-A-U-L, if you want Bernard's, uh, you know, Mech Warrior 2 Mercenaries update and all the rest of the stuff he's done. But uh, excellent. Well, thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate you taking the time. 
And uh, yeah, everyone listening, we'll catch you on the next episode of Renegade HP. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Bye. Bye. Bye.